Well, congratulations. We've made it to the top 10. I can't believe this month has gone by so quickly. Today's pick has to do with one of my favorite subgenres of horror, psychological horror, as it can take so many twisted and demented forms, proving that the scariest thing out there is that which the rational mind simply cannot comprehend. The Best in Horror Countdown 2023 through 2024 honors some deeply sick psychological horrors in today's pick. Stop motion is not for the faint of heart. It's the type of psychological horror that digs deep and stings, which is why it's at the beginning of my top 10. At number 10, Stop Motion was released on February 23rd, 2024, and it's streaming on Shudder from IFC Films. It's directed by Robert Morgan and written by Robert Morgan and Robin King. Suzanne is a famous stop motion animator played by Stella Gonate. She suffers from some kind of hand paralysis, leaving it up to her daughter, Ella, played by Aisling Franciosi, to be her hands in the painstaking process of bringing the small sculptures to life. When Suzanne suffers what looks to be a stroke and must stay in the hospital, Ella meets a young girl, played by Kaolin Springall, in her apartment building, who inspires Ella to scrap her overbearing mother's project and begin a new one with the young girl's ideas as inspiration. But the deeper into this new project Ella gets, the more her mind seems to fracture, as Ella is dredging up deeply repressed personal memories as inspiration for this new piece. Though her boyfriend Tom, played by Tom York, not the Radiohead lead singer, tries to be supportive of Ella during this fragile time, Ella's obsession with completing this new animation is all-encompassing and becomes destructive to Ella's own personal safety. Director Robert Morgan doles out one hell of a metaphorical powerhouse in stop motion, which basically depicts the slow descent into utter madness due to what seems like years of all sorts of abuse. While the film keeps things rather vague, the answers are all right there to parse through. Ella is first shown as a fragile young woman, burdened by her overbearing mother and her peers in the stop-motion profession who seem to be getting all the breaks Ella desires. With her mother out of the picture, the structured life Ella was living, no matter how abusive it was, is shattered, and with it goes Ella's mind. At first, there's a creative elation as Ella and her new young protege create exciting new characters out of unconventional materials like mortician's wax and raw meat. But while this process seems to benefit her greatly, it also unleashes memories Ella seems to have buried deep inside. As those memories come back to the surface, in the form of a story in her new animation, Ella is not prepared for where the story, that hits a little too close to home, will go. Stop Motion delves into some deep Freudian psychological horrors, suggesting all kinds of childhood abuse in some very not-so-subtle ways. Those who prefer to be spoon-fed their story will have issue with how deep into metaphor this film gets, but I found this dive into surreal symbolism and abstract representation to be refreshing. The world has become too literal these days, especially the world of horror, where every film has to have the obligatory info dump from some kind of expert at the end. You won't find that in stop motion, and wow does it make the movie all the more powerful. Early on, there are obvious fractures in Ella's mind, and they're quite easy to point out, especially if you've seen as many Descent into Madness movies as I have. Still, I love it that director Morgan doesn't rely on these delusions as some kind of gotcha hook. It's quite obvious from the midway point that a lot of the stuff we see is only going on in Ella's head. But the depths this movie goes is what kept me riveted to the screen. And wow, does this film go there. It is dark, horrifyingly and disturbingly dark. Sure, there's some body horror going on, and things get bloody as all get out as Ella begins to rely on grosser and grosser things to make her puppets out of, but the absolutely spine-quiveringly disturbing stuff has to do with the memories that these animations Ella makes are inspired from. We're never told exact details, 
But these dark visions she's concocting with all kinds of malleable materials are hints that she has had a very, very tragic life. Stop motion has some moments where you're going to want to cover your eyes and curl your toes into little foot fists as Ella confronts the heinous horrors of her childhood. Not since those tool videos of old directed by Adam Jones and the haunting films of Jan Svankmeyer has stop motion animation been so creepy and disturbing. The sculptures, which seem to be by art director Ben Andrews, are wonderfully grotesque. The sculpts are dirty and malformed, like a nightmare you try to recall, but it keeps moving backwards into the ether the more you think about it. Even the sculpt of the girl is ragged, wet, and distraught. But compared to the monster at this girl's window, the little girl is downright adorable. These creatures are made of organic objects that feel rotten and squishy. They look like they smell awful. These sculptures are uncomfortable to look at, like ragged open wounds, which exactly represents these hidden memories ripped from Ellie's damaged psyche. Seeing these little creatures come to life and interact with Ellie is the stuff of raw and unnerving night terrors. Stop Motion is a highly effective psychological horror film that delivers on gore, intense themes of abuse, and feelings that hurt just to think about them. Lead actress Ainsling Franciosi and director Robert Morgan masterfully bring some very complex emotions to vibrant and uncanny life. If you don't mind the brain fuckery and stomach churning imagery, I think you're going to get as big of a charge as I did from Stop Motion. I highly, highly recommend this movie for those who thought the horror genre didn't have teeth anymore. Stop Motion proves that theory wrong. Another film that dealt with past trauma and dark ways of covering it up, and even darker ways of how it eventually boils to the surface, is Monolith. It's a smaller scale film that definitely needs more eyes on it. Monolith was released on February 16th, 2024, and is streaming on Amazon Prime from WellGo USA. It's directed by Matt Vesely and written by Lucy Campbell. Evil Dead Rises' Lily Sullivan plays a disgraced journalist who now runs a conspiracy blog. When she receives a strange anonymous email concerning a vast mystery, she tracks down the series of unexplainable phenomena concerning solid black bricks showing up containing strange codes within their structure. As she digs deeper, More strangeness occurs as she seemingly manifests a brick of her own through thought alone and uncovers deep dark secrets from her own past. Monolith is not going to be for everyone. For the most part, it centers on one actor in a room talking with various people over the phone and online. In many ways, it reminded me of Pontypool. So that's a good way to gauge whether you might be interested in this or not. Most likely, they filmed Monolith during the pandemic, While it is professionally made in every way, Monolith is a shining example of less is more, maintaining a solid and transfixing story on a very low budget. Some may find it hard to follow the continuous switching from one conversation to the next as Sullivan's character desperately gets pulled into this conspiracy and frantically investigates to find the truth that becomes more personal the longer she looks into it. But Lucy Campbell's script peppers in revelations and more mysteries on top of one another, and this film had me the entire way through. The black brick is quite the metaphor, as it could represent almost any kind of negative thing that occurs in one's life come back to haunt them from the past. It basically is Sullivan's dark past made form, and once it hits personally, one can argue that this involves any dark secret one has kept buried and unaddressed. Monolith's story keeps the true meaning under wraps, allowing the viewer to hypothesize as to what exactly it's all about. Is it a vast government conspiracy, an alien invasion, or simply a personal nightmare come to life? Those looking for definite answers are going to be disappointed, but those who allow a little wiggle room for interpretation might enjoy how vast this subject matter can be canvassed. While answers are not certain in Monolith, the fact that Lily Sullivan is one hell of an actress certainly is. She was kind of overshadowed by all of the blood and spectacle in Evil Dead Rise, but here it's simply her, raw, full of passion and emotion, attempting to uncover a mystery that gets more compelling the longer it remains unanswered. Director Matt Vesely should also be complimented greatly for making this movie look and feel interesting though it only moves outside of the house towards the end of the movie. The rest of the time, you're stuck in one room with the lead actress. And this is still a vibrant film, despite its closed confines. 
Monolith has one hell of a mystery, and while the answers are left up to you, the performances, the struggle, and the absolute horror of secrets manifested are apparent from beginning to end. This is one hell of a quiet yet pervasive shocker that shouldn't be missed. Once again and always, feel free to agree, disagree, or how about you play along at home and give me your own picks for your favorite horror movies. It's October, so let's talk horror. Come back tomorrow for the next level in the Best in Horror Countdown. Be sure to hit all of those pertinent bells and whistles down below, and you'll never miss a post. Happy Halloween, folks. Please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. You're doomed to live the life you're meant to be stuck inside.